1947 <laughs> My name is Bill Stevens, born and raised in Norton Trapline, outside of Fort Yukon, November 7, 1933. My grandmother, Sitsu Sarah, delivered me. My dad's name was John Stevens, and my mom's uh, was Maggie Davis from Canada. Them days in early days, there's a lot of people come to the hospital to work, ladies. So the men scout around around there, you know. So that's how they met. Yeah, there was uh, eight of us. And we just grew up as a, a family unit. We had to make a living, go out the trap line. We would uh, sell the fur for fur trade, for scraps. Link and then uh, Martin and me. We have about eight dogs in single lines, and we have a toboggan. And then uh, snowshoes got to be in our life too. If it's like it's snow out there that much, we got to run ahead of the dog with snowshoes. Sometime all day. That's why I'm, I said we were tough, you know. And my dad is a traditional hunter. And we live off the land, you know. We, we travel and we see a porcupine and we stop and get it, you know. <laughs> and we see a moose, we get it too, you know. I grew up in fish camp way down Black River. And that's part of our life. All of us, all the family, learning those kind of traditions. Fish wheel too. You see these fish wheels. My grandfather and the whole family. This has got to do a lot with my grandfather, Chief Lula. He always wear this kind of hat. And Grandma Susera, she was medicine uh, person, you know, all that you get hurt. And pitch is her medicine. Spruce trees, you know, they got pitch on them. I chopped my leg right there with, you know, injured with an axe, you know, and she fixed that with a zikru pitch and then got healed right away. Fort Yukon at the um, BIA school, Bureau of Indian Affairs. <laughs> and um, it's up to eighth grade. So we go to school sporadically sometime. Uh, for Christmas, we come into town, stay there till uh, a couple of months and go to school. And after that, I went to Mount Edgecombe School and I took up vocational machinery and graduated from that. But the main education in them days in the 1940s and 50s was to survive out in the woods. You got to be a good mechanic for your boat. You got to build your own houses. All you need is a few nails and a hammer and a saw. And dog team, maintain a dog team, trap line, fish, and then we make canoes fish wheel. That's our education. <laughs> Fort Yukon was a drinking town. There's a bush pilot that sells uh, wine, four dollars a quart, and the whole town gets drunk once in a while. 
1952, my mother passed away, and I hate to say it, but she froze to death oozing. It's not alcoholism, and true to myself, she was a pretty good mom, and dad was out in trap line when that happened. And after that, uh, that raised us, you know. And things were kind of tough, you know, but we held together. That's a chance for opportunity. BIA relocation service. They took the native people from their home life, took them to California, all over the United States, and they give us a job, get us established, like cheap jobs and stuff like that. I put in for it, and I left in 1960. My first job was a trailer company. They were wiring, I was the wiring inside. So I stayed there until I was laid off. And then I got a job at the San Francisco y YMCA. You know, out, in the, out in the woods, you know. They got a camp. So I worked there for about a year, I guess. And then I put my first car there. From there, uh, I got, I got, it led me into a good job. Timber stand improvement and reforestation. And I was a straw boss because I was a hustler and a good worker. In California, there's a fiddle contest, and I jammed with a lot of known fiddlers, you know. Virgil Evans, state champion fiddler. Him and I became good friends. Determination. I set out to do something and my mind is set, you know, I'm going to accomplish it regardless. It was a tough instrument to learn, but I was a hustler, that's why I kept at it, sometimes four hours at a time. The bosom part, well, I thought that a long distance would cure me, you know, with something like that. But no, it's with me in the body. I was around the streets drinking and just living uh, street life. It is a very good program. I learned sobriety from that Harold Cedar Tree. Arapaho Indian. He uh, sponsored me to AA. That was 1967, and that's my last drink. Once our body is addicted, well, it's, it's a never cured. Even right now, after 50 years, it's still inside of me. It's arrested. But if I take a drink now, it'll fire up again, right where I left off. Even worse. So that's where it is, addiction. You know, I was single and young, and I got a good sports car. And um, you know these single dances? So this cute girl caught my eye, dancing right by her, Make my round. Next round, I flick my eyes to one side and she was dying. So her name was Jackie. Jackie Zinn. And in 1972, we got married. First uh, pregnancy, she had a portion without my permission. A year later, Mr. She knows that I want a kid, so she was pregnant again, so she had miscarriage. 
finally got the words. My dad died in about 77, so I came back for that funeral. People were glad to see me, and I decided to come back. And I worked for the school district in Fort Yukon as a school liaison. And then at that school, I met this girl. We eyed each other. And then uh, I got her pregnant. And then uh, that too uh, was Miss Karras. I could have had three kids there, you know, but I'm just, uh, I don't know kids nowadays. I had a lot of silent sufferings, you know, but I always managed to pray. I go to my church pretty regularly on you know, Sundays, Episcopal, St. Matthew Church, and I maintain my faith. When I was in California for so long that I changed a little bit, you know, I was more like but then I noticed, I brought my fiddle along with me. I noticed how much they love the fiddle still. Chatsawa. Chatsawa means um, here he comes to the sack full of dances. Yeah. Charlotte Potatoes, Peter, nicknamed me. Music is my life, bluegrass and old time fiddling. I get a lot of gigs to play. Those are the things I remember and making friends with all that. I got friends all over. Australia, Scotland, and England, and all over the United States. I met a lot of fans. I could have had three kids. I think about it today. So I teach the young kids, that's my kids. <laughs> I have fun working with them. Stay free from drugs and uh, alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs>